From America to Japan, from India to France, whiskey is made in all four corners of the globe. But when people ask who came first, Ireland or Scotland, it was the Irish. The story of whiskey is the story of Bushmills. Bushmills has such a great story of persistence and tradition, you know. They've been doing this stuff for hundreds of years. The home of whiskey so far that we've found is really Bushmills, it's Northern Ireland. That's where people started to really put all the pieces together and start to make what we now know as single malt whiskey. Bushmills in County Coleraine was a perfect spot for a distillery. What makes Bushmills such an ideal place for whiskey distillation is not only is there an amazing water source, the river bush, but there's also plentiful barley fields all around. When you open a bottle of Bushmills single malt, Really, you're drinking liquid history. Distillation travels around the world with sailors. They come with innovations and technologies from Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and those ideas lead to Irish distillers ultimately making what we now know as single malt. The Red Book of Ossery, written in the 12th century, has the very first recipe of whiskey in the 1500s. Whiskey becomes the drink of the Irish people. Usquebaugh, it's called, the water of life, the Gaelic translation of the Latin aqua vitae. People are drinking it by the water glass full. It gets a really big reputation. You must remember we're only 17 miles from Scotland and that is where whiskey was brought over from the north coast of Ireland. A lot of drinkers, unfortunately, are under this assumption that scotch was first and that scotch created the category, which we of course now know is not true. Scotch and Irish whiskey share a ton of commonality, but they develop quite differently, almost like two different siblings. Before we even get what we now know as whiskey, people were making distilled beverages in Ireland. Out of all of the different things that were being distilled, this primordial stew, if you will, of distillation, comes what we know today as single malt whiskey. And really, for now centuries, it's fairly unchanged. 1600 is really when Bushmill starts, and that's also when we see, you know, kind of the modern era of whiskey production begin. Bushmills can claim to be the original whiskey for the fact that we have the world's oldest license. So that license was signed back on the 20th of April, 1608, by King James I. By this stage, there would have been thousands of distilleries throughout the island of Ireland. That license was brought in to essentially control the amounts of distillation within the area. That small community up in the very rugged north coast of Ireland, we got recognised before anyone else. So 1608 means everything, not just the whiskey, but to the village. By 1784, Hugh Anderson then listed Bushmills Distillery as a limited company. We finally started paying our taxes after we were first asked to back in 1608. By the early 1800s, this whiskey is getting a reputation. The Irish have like really perfected their grain distilling. The Bushmills is this very elegant style of malt whiskey. Uh, that's a little unusual in Ireland. They go to triple distillation to make a very smooth whiskey. Beginning in the middle of the 19th century, there's some uh, global historic events that really impact the hell out of Irish whiskey. First is the potato famine, sending more than a million Irish people to America. Right after the potato famine, we've got the American Civil War. A lot of the American whiskey industry is behind enemy lines or on the front line. So uh, whiskey, you know, needs to come from somewhere. America quickly becomes Ireland's best customer for Irish whiskey, and it continues to be through the 1800s. It's only helped by Phylloxera, which is this terrible little aphid-like creature, which eats its way across vineyards across Europe. Completely wipes out Western European grape crops. Now, fancy people, uh, they're learning to drink whiskey. They're drinking a lot of Bushmills whiskey, for that matter, because, uh, you know, that's the good stuff. At the turn of the 20th century, Bushmills was doing great. They had access to markets, they had a known brand. They were exported all over the world. They had a great reputation for quality. We were starting to win world awards from Chicago through to Paris. We were held within Harrods. We were served within the House of Commons. 
We are being recognized by kings around the world. And that really was the pinnacle and the golden age of Irish whiskey and really the golden age of Bushmills. The 20th century starts out okay, but then it takes a serious turn. A perfect storm of calamity is hit. Where the First World War it rocked supplies of whiskey going around the world. And it doesn't let up after peace finally comes in 1918 because you've got the Spanish flu epidemic. We then had the Irish Civil War. We then had Prohibition come in. Which essentially overnight shuts down Ireland's greatest customer for whiskey. Even after Prohibition is over, you have a few years where whiskey distillers, you know, kind of try to reboot. The drinker almost needs to be retrained as to what is the good stuff. And then just as it seems that whiskey is about to break through again, we're hit with World War II. Unfortunately, in Belfast, where our headquarters were based, the Nazi bombing campaign completely took out the entire area where our bonded warehouses were. At the end of World War II into the 1950s, it was a really bad time for people who liked uh, these elegant Irish single malt whiskies. People were gravitating to things that were super easy to drink, super easy to mix. You know, it was an atomic age. They wanted shortcuts. They wanted things that were, were, were simple and easy and that they didn't really have to think about. And for the first time, you start to see Irish whiskey coming into the American market as a blend. This style of triple distilled Irish malt's almost extinct. Forty years ago, Ireland only had two whiskey distilleries left, whereas today we're sitting at over 30. That gives you an idea of just how much Irish whiskey has exploded, and particularly over the last decade. Once again, people are rediscovering bush mills, and more importantly, rediscovering our single malts. I don't think it's changed much since probably the 1820s. That's a long time ago. Bush mills has a unique place in the history of Irish whiskey. They really learned what they were doing and they perfected it, and that's what we get today. You know, this is a perfected product. All the rough edges have been sanded off. Not even sanded, they've been worn off by hands, you know, just like uh, the woodwork in an old bar. We have survived everything thrown at us, and we will continue to keep surviving for all those hundreds of years more. Bushmills, through all of these major global events, they're able to persevere, to rebuild, to come back, and when they rebuild and they come back, they don't change a thing. And that's the most amazing thing about this story, is that while the world has changed quite a bit, Bush Mills kept doing the same thing, making single malt whiskey, which really is a taste of liquid history.